first grade? Ooh, it's really loud here. Let's try moving to the next place. Oh, it's still kind of loud. Let's try one more place. Ah, this is a little bit better. It's Miss Geary from Ebner Elementary, and today I am going to be talking to you all about water. I want you thinking, put on those thinking caps. What are some things that you already know about water? Hmm, take a couple of seconds to think about that. And the first thing I'm going to do with you is read a very special book. So let's get ready. Here's our story. It is called Earth's Water. Let's take a quick sneak peek. Oh, I'm noticing some pictures. Okay, I think I have an idea of what this book might be about. Here are some words to know. Evaporation, gas, invisible, liquid, polluted, and solid. Table of contents. So if you wanna read about water everywhere, you turn to page four. Different forms of water is on page seven, which you guys should have studied this earlier in the year with solids, liquids, and gases. Changing water is on page 11, and water is important on page 14. If you're not sure what a word means, you can look it up in the glossary on page 16. Water everywhere. Water is in ponds, lakes, and oceans. It flows in rivers and streams. It is in the air and frozen as snow and ice. It looks like I can see a mountain up here. This looks like it might be a lake. These people look like they might be in a stream with a backpack. Ooh. Most of Earth is covered with water. Plants and animals need water to live. The dark parts of this picture of Earth are water. So this is all water, that blue area. The white part's clouds and the green part is the land. What are some ways you use Earth's water? Oh, I want you to really think about this. Now I'm going to show you some things that my friends, family, and I like to do on the water. There's me in junior high school with one of my friends and we went to Lake Chautauqua, which is about three and a half hours from here. And we went tubing and boating. Here's my brother, he loves to white water raft. He also likes to water ski and jet ski. There's Mr. Bentley. Look how much fun he's having in the water. This is Bentley and his friend swimming at a lake in Michigan. And I have a special surprise video for you. It's going to show you something else Bentley likes to do in the water. Here's one of my students, Callie, playing in the stream. That's my best friend, Jillian. She likes to fish. That's her dog, Josie. And Josie likes to go swimming in the water. Josie also likes to kayak with Jillian. That's me when I was a little girl swimming in a pool. And someone else likes to swim in a pool. Who's that? That's right, that's Mr. Bentley. Different forms of water. Most of the water we see is a liquid. Liquid water takes the shape of the container it is in. And you can see, look how water took the shape of this form and this form. And the caption here says, each of these containers holds four cups of water. 
here's some water that I visited. This is the Niagara Falls. It's about four and a half hours away from us here in Altoona. And this is Watkins Glen State Park. They have lots of waterfalls and streams and a few lakes for you to see. And it is about a little over three hours away. Not all water is liquid. When water gets very cold, it freezes. It becomes solid. Solid water is called ice. Do any of you like ice in your drinks maybe? This caption here says, ice can be carved into many shapes. So here's a picture of a time that I went to see ice sculptures in State College. Aren't they beautiful and amazing? Much of Earth's frozen water is at the North and South Poles. This caption reads, sheets of ice cover Earth's South Pole. How neat. Here's my brother snowboarding in snow, and here's Bentley playing in snow. I bet you like to play in snow too. Some of Earth's water is invisible. It is in the air. This water is a gas. And this caption reads, what forms of water can you see in this picture? I see some water here. I see some water here, and I see some water here. Oh, I hope you got all of those. Changing water. Water is always changing. When frozen water is heated, it melts. It changes to a liquid. When liquid water gets cold, it freezes. It changes to ice. And up here it says the sunlight heats up the snow and the snowman melts. Have you ever seen a snowman melt? Maybe in your neighborhood or in your own yard? I built lots of snowmen before. And at one time they all had to eventually melt when it got hot outside or when the sun came out. Check out this video of a melting ice cube. Have you watched an ice cube melt before? Have you ever seen a puddle of water dry up on a hot day? Energy from the sun changed the liquid water into a gas. This is called evaporation. And our caption here says, energy from the sun causes the water to evaporate. I think you can see the puddle of water right here. And it does look really bright in that photo, so it looks like the sun is out that day. This shows how evaporation works. Here goes the evaporation. There it goes again. Check out this dog. He's wet and then a woman uses a warm blow dryer to dry his hair. When the water leaves his fur, that's called evaporation. When invisible water in the air gets cold, it can make clouds. Clouds are tiny droplets of liquid water. These drops can get bigger. Then they fall as rain. And our caption here says, clouds drop water on the desert as rain. Water is important. Rain keeps plants alive. And I know I always water my plants. Actually, I have a plant right behind me. You can see it. I have to water that all the time. That's a plant from my grandfather. And we fight fires with water, so it's important to be able to put out fires with water. And animals take baths in water, us included. We too have to take a bath so that we can stay clean. There are lots of other things that water is important for as well. It is important to take care of Earth's water. Polluted water makes people, plants, and animals sick. Would you want to drink and play in polluted water? Oh my, look at this polluted water. Ooh, how gross. This is the not polluted water. If you had to choose 
would you want to swim in the polluted dirty water or would you rather swim in this nice clean water? I know which one I would choose. The clean water that's not polluted. It looks a lot safer. And that's the end of our story. If you wanted to look up any of the definitions here, this is our glossary. I hope you had a lot of fun reading with me today, kiddos, and that you learned something about water. Okay, kiddos, it's game time. I'm going to play a sound and I want you to tell me what you think the water sound is or in which body of water you might hear this sound. Some of them are a little bit tricky, so give it your very best guess and see how many you can get right. Okay, I would like for you to write a sentence about what you like to do in water. So I want you to grab a piece of paper and a pencil or a pen, a crayon, whatever you have at home. I chose the color blue because we're talking about water. So I thought, why not choose blue? And you are going to write, I like to blank in water. So start with a capital letter I, put a space, and then write the word like, and that's a magic E word. Leave a space to, and this is where you have to fill in the blank with whatever you like to do in water. Maybe you like to water ski or swim or dive into a pool or splash in a pool or play Marco Polo in the pool whatever you enjoy doing in water. Maybe you even like to take a bath in water, whatever you want to write. So I like to, hmm, in, leave a space, water, wa, ah, and be careful, that's an A there, t, er. And make sure you put either a period or an excited mark at the end of your sentence. Wonderful job, first grade. I hope you enjoyed today's lesson.
Bye-bye.